anyone who thought we had already reached the peak of CPU cooler development was wrong. In today's review, we'll be looking at a truly luxurious AIO featuring a high-resolution 6.5-inch curved display, which is also customizable. This is the new Trix Panorama SE ARGB in its 360mm version in black. As a matter of fact, there's a white version available as well. Luxury is a pretty good description here, as the price at roughly 280 US dollars currently is quite high for an AIO liquid cooler. Therefore, today's product is likely aimed at a certain target group, those who call themselves enthusiasts and are willing to dig deep into their pockets to own the latest tech for their PC. Price performance ratio is no longer a priority here. For once, that's not going to be the focus today. I'll more so be focusing on the curved display, the possibilities it offers and how it can be customized to suit the individual user. Of course, I will also be conducting tests on actual cooling performance with both AMD and Intel CPUs and will also measure noise levels. The Panorama SE ARGB certainly does look promising in terms of quality as the manufacturer offers a 6-year warranty on the AIU unit itself, but only a 2-year warranty on the display. Now, the package includes the practically fully assembled AIO liquid cooler. The fans come already pre-attached. There's also some mounting hardware, some thermal paste, an installation guide, and an adapter cable for connecting both the fans and lighting with as few cables as possible. The fans already come pre-connected with a proprietary connector. On the one hand, this minimizes nasty cable clutter, but on the other hand, I'm not exactly a fan of proprietary connectors either. Although the ending connectors are in fact standard 4-pin PWM and 3-pin 5-volt ARGB connectors. Further daisy chaining is certainly an option here. Let's start with the radiator. It's made out of aluminum and sports a standard thickness of 27mm. The build quality seems pretty solid. The fittings on both the pump unit and radiator are made of plastic though, which is not exactly uncommon with most AIOs on the market. Surely some of your well-trained eyes will recognize the manufacturer behind the pump, Acetec. To be exact, the so-called Adela pump is used here. Generally speaking, you can expect quality from Acetec, hence the generous 6-year-long warranty. The pump speed is an impressive 2800 to 3600 RPM and the tube length comes in at a solid 450 mm. Furthermore, the tubing is very elegantly sleeved. Also included are Trix's in-house Rhoda ARGB fans with a fan speed range of 500 to 1850 RPM. Rubberized fan corners are indeed present to help dampen vibrations. Now for the most interesting part of the AIO, the curved display. It's a 6.5 inch AMOLED screen with a G2 curvature. In terms of resolution, we are talking of razor sharp 2K, the refresh rate is 60 Hz and the display can also get fairly bright at 400 nits. It's also worth mentioning that the display is rotatable, meaning it can be adjusted to meet your setup's needs. However, the options in that regard are not entirely unlimited, as the tubes can become an obstacle. The display element is simply attached to the pump head and held in place by magnets. To establish a connection between the display and the PC, a standard internal USB 2.0 header on the motherboard is used. The display can then be controlled through software. It goes by the name of Kanali. It allows you to somewhat monitor system resources and display nice quirky presets on the display. At the time of this video, a total of 15 built-in presets are available, which as a minimalist are a bit too much for me personally. I'm left unimpressed by these. But none of that matters because we are allowed to display our own videos, images and the like just like that. For today's review, I quickly prepared something that's not copyrighted, my logo and intro. You can provide your own material for two display modes, full screen and split screen. Full screen displays the material in full screen mode, obviously. What I personally really like is that we can display system relevant information such as CPU or GPU temperatures, clock speeds, voltages and the time and stuff like that. I would have found it even nicer if we could adjust the text and its locations even more precisely. Small special effects like rain or smoke can also be added on top of our material. For me, I chose the smoke effect. 
for split screen mode, the material must be uploaded in a different aspect ratio. You are then free to choose which material is displayed on which half of the screen. That can even be a mix of a video and still image. However, due to AMOLED tech being used here, it is recommended not to display still images all the time, but rather display moving, rotating images, such as videos and the like, to avoid nasty burn in over time. My first thought, however, was, with so many gimmicks combined with the software solution, this surely would affect the rest of the system, both performance-wise and in terms of power consumption when idling. In fact, power consumption will definitely be higher than with a regular AIO. There's no other way around it, and that's something you probably know and accept beforehand when you pick up something like this. Also due to the Canali software running in the background, CPU usage is likely higher when idle, but fortunately it's hardly worth the mention, because the display element also contains an embedded system with a quad-core CPU, 2GB of RAM and 8GB of ROM to take off load of our main CPU. It's nice that the manufacturer has given this some thought. As is typical for Acetec, the pump comes with a regular copper base and thermal paste is already applied for our first install. All common CPU sockets are supported, that is AM5, AM4, as well as LGA1851 and 1700. It's just that the fans appear to not being able to offer that high of a static pressure, on paper at least. Let's see if this negatively impacts the cooling performance or not. I conducted my initial test with the AMD Ryzen 7 3800X followed by the toasty Intel Core i9-13900K running at a power limit of 253 watts. The installation for an AMD and Intel CPU actually barely even differs here. I would even go as far and say that the installation is one of the simplest and most effective ones ever so far. It also definitely doesn't interfere with any of the memory. The tests were carried out with the test systems displayed on screen now. Noise levels. All cooling solutions are now running at their max speed. I measured 51 decibels for today's Panorama SE. This puts it somewhere in the middle, although admittedly that is still fairly noisy. Comparable Be Quiet AIOs, however, are even a bit louder in this configuration. The pump of today's Trix cooler does emit a noticeable hum at max speed and also in specific speed ranges. I personally don't find it annoying, but it's certainly not the quietest pump out there temperatures at max fan speed with the AMD 3800X. It's once again proven to us that the 3800X CPU basically doesn't seem to care much which CPU cooler you use to cool it. Therefore today's AIO delivers almost identical results to other 360mm AIOs in this test. Temperatures at max fan speed with the Intel 13900K. Under Prime95 load, the Panorama SE delivers respectable values. It doesn't even allow the CPU to reach a max temperature above 90 degrees Celsius, but over a longer duration, its average temperature lags slightly behind a Be Quiet light loop or an Arctic liquid freezer and the like. Interestingly, the idle temperature is also slightly higher. It seems one does notice the display's software running in the background there. If we apply even more load with Cinebench 2024, the Panorama SE achieves exactly the same results. Here too, a similar picture emerges. Most other 360mm AIOs are slightly ahead of today's Trix AIO in terms of cooling performance. Temperatures at a fixed 40 decibels. Now all coolers are configured to run at exactly 40 decibels, no matter how much you have to lower fan speeds in order to achieve that. Once again, in the Prime95 stress test, the Panorama SE starts to falter a bit in this tricky configuration. At the very max, it's on par with its competitors, but when looking at those average results, the CPU temperature with the Trix AIO is 3 to 5 degrees higher than that of its competitors. Not a bad result, but perhaps a bit concerning considering the unit's high price. Fortunately, the Panorama SE noticeably seems to be catching up under Cinebench 2024 load. The gap to other 360mm AIOs is now only 1 to 3 degrees. That is okay. Conclusion. You saw it yourselves in the charts, the Trix Panorama SE ARGB doesn't necessarily offer the best cooling performance. 
so if you were expecting beastly cooling performance alone is what justifies the high price here, you are mistaken. The performance is simply okay, not bad, but certainly not great either, somewhere in a healthy middle ground. If you take the price into account, it's actually a bit concerning. But I already said at the beginning of the video that this is probably not about a good value for money. The focus is clearly on the large, high resolution curved display. That is a design element that makes this AIO extremely special, stand out, and that part is implemented really well and will certainly attract a few enthusiasts. If you're looking for a purely functional AIO liquid cooler, you should look elsewhere. Aesthetics are the priority here, although this is ultimately a matter of preference. I'd give the display itself a really high score and the cooling performance and associated noise levels only a satisfactory rating. However, I find it a shame that the Acetec pump is fairly tricky to get to run truly quietly. Some other models listed in my chart do a better job with that. That's why the Panorama SE doesn't perform as well in the 40 decibel test, because you have to lower the fan and pump speed too much in order to get to 40 decibels exactly and allow for a fair comparison with other cooling solutions at the same noise level. In my opinion, this is what the manufacturer should work on improving most. That said, for hardcore PC enthusiasts who are happy to dig quite deep into their pockets for outstanding eye-catchy hardware, the Trix Panorama SE ARGB360 might be the component they'd want to upgrade their system to next in order to make their system more special. It's definitely not for the average consumer out there. Do you think this Trix AIO is as awesome as I think it is? Do you even like this kind of look or is it a bit too much? What are your thoughts on the overall implementation of the display concept? If you enjoyed the video, I'd greatly appreciate a like, and if not, go ahead and make use of that dislike button. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and until the next one.